Hello, my name's Steve Nabry. Today we're going to look around a CMB Bordeaux 60, which I must declare is one of my favourite boats. I've been lucky enough to sell quite a number of these and sailed them a lot um, in various CMB uh, owners events and I really only have positive things to say about the model. Pinchitu is hull number 30 of the series and really is an outstanding boat. She was probably the first boat to have a major refit. So we're here in Cap Dag next to um, a younger CMB 66. But when we see the two boats next to one another, um, frankly, you don't see, don't think this is the older boat. Um, she was built in 2011 um, as a 2012 model. She's been repainted in a very nice grey. Um, a very good job was done by a yard in Barcelona. Um, at the same time, she had new air conditioning, lithium batteries, and the rig was replaced and the mast repainted. So she is an exceptional example. Right from new, she had these lovely teak um, uh, and carbon wheels, which need covering um, to keep them in that condition. But really, they make her feel like a special yacht from the first moment you step aboard. Of course, being an older design, one of the things that is a little different to the modern CMBs is the cockpit. It is smaller, but I think it has lots of advantages to um, those of you who want to sail with less crew. All the lines come back to these four winches. She is exceptionally easy to move around and I think very secure. The model has a great reputation in terms of sea keeping, but having sailed them in owner's regattas, um, really uh, they sail very, very well. Um, one of her sister ships um, won the UK round the island race. Um, it's a great sailing boat, but really also very forgiving for a family crew who want to go longer distance. Um, I have a client who pretty much um, on his own sailed around the Caribbean with his dog children um, and his partner who had never been sailing before. It's really an outstanding yacht. It stands up very, very well when compared to the latest designs. Uh, the looks of the boat are sensational and I'd recommend anybody to consider them who wants to go blue water sailing. So, here we are on Pinchitu's decks. She had teak installed on the coach roof from new, which was quite an expensive extra, but the boats with the teak really do stand out. Somehow it sets off this really, really elegant design from Briand, and the windows are sleek, but let in a lot of light. You have two big windows here, which you'll see later are above the galley, and it makes the whole saloon really a very nice environment. Um, the, last, the, the current owner of Pinjitu is the third owner. He spent a lot of money on new cushions. Obviously, we talked about the fact that the hull was painted, the boom was repainted, the boom is in carbon, so it's not outrageously um, heavy. You have instruments installed on the mast, which when helming really make a big difference. Um, the owner of Pinchitu wanted a good size rib, um, so he installed these fittings on the foredeck, which he has a three meter rib. You could have a slightly larger rib if you wanted to. Um, the garage pretty much is used for storage by the current owner. Um, but a 2.9 meter tender can go in there, even if some of the models will require the sponsons to be slightly deflated. Headsaws are on manual furlers, um, but allow a really, really nice combination of sail plans. For a short-handed crew, she really is a very, very easy boat to sail. The nice big foredeck, um, it just feels like a boat you want to go sailing on. So here we are down below on Pinchitu. I mentioned upstairs, it's a boat that really makes me want to go sailing, but it is also a boat that really makes me want to spend time aboard. 
Um, she has perhaps a slightly conservative, traditional design, but goodness, it really, really works. Um, you have a sofa which pulls out to form a chaise long. You have a very generous uh, dining area, lounging area, something which you don't see so often these days. That chart table is just perfect. It's in the right place. It's a good size. You get the, the benefit of the current owner's investment in new instrumentation. Um, really, you can use it as an office area for those of you lucky enough to spend more time aboard. Yet another thing which really I must emphasize is this galley. It is amazing for a 60 foot yacht. Um, it's very well equipped, fridges, freezers, dishwasher, um, uh, an induction hob and electric oven. Um, she has a cooker, um, water heater, really nothing to add. Um, I think something else which really helps with the design are these windows. Bear in mind the other two windows are currently covered up with the sunbathing cushions, but it's still on a cloudy day, very bright and just an excellent, excellent environment. So here we are in Pinchitu's owner's cabin. It's a great cabin, a good sized bed. Um, you have a walk-in um, wardrobe over here, which is truly a generous size for a 60 foot yacht. Um, nice fabrics have been used to finish her off. Um, she has a seating area. Probably worth noting out uh, that as Hull 30, she benefits from the latest um, changes and updates to the design. So she has a full width um, shower, which is really a very, very good size shower. Um, that door leads through to the forepeak, which is on a number of the boats, there are um, berths installed there, but really it's sail storage and gear. Um, it's a really, really good owner's cabin. Back in Pinchitu's saloon, there are a couple of other points I'd like to draw your attention to. Firstly, the machinery space. Um, CMBs have a great reputation for noise suppression. Don't forget, before they built this boat, they were really building only one-off super yachts. Um, this area is well organized, well insulated from a sound point of view. So you have Volvo D4, you have the generator, you have the water maker and all the machinery. These four panels all hinge up, which make it very easy to get to. So for uh, an owner managing the boat himself, it makes maintenance much easier. Um, it also is obviously great for the weight distribution. Um, and then as we go off, there are little details that make a difference. Don't see many of these these days. Um, in there, there is a drain, so it's a wet locker. Um, you have a day head, which also forms the ensuite to the starboard aft cabin. And then the port aft cabin has its own bathroom as well. It's a boat that allows you to take friends and family um, in comfort and in not inconsiderable luxury. So you've probably guessed from the last few minutes, I'm quite a fan of the Bordeaux 60. I think they're outstanding yachts. Um, they're great sailing boats. They're very comfortable um, they're capable. Um, they'll look after you in heavy weather and they still manage to slip along in light airs. The next owner of this boat is really going to benefit tremendously from the investment that's been made by the current owner. With new paint on the hull, the mast, um, she's been thoroughly, thoroughly refitted. There's lots of cosmetic upgrades, new instrumentation, really everything is ready to go. She has been surveyed and the current owner um, has been through that list and made sure everything is absolutely ready to go. Um, she is VAT paid and she has also paid Spanish taxes so for a Spanish resident she's a particularly interesting yacht. Um, I think she's an outstanding opportunity for the next owner.